Well, Jimmy Lennon Jr. continues his introductions. Uh, we will take a look at the tail of the tape. And you see there uh, Mike Tyson, a uh, few years younger. He's actually six years younger. He's 11 and a half pounds uh, lighter than his Buster Douglas, and he's giving away five inches in height. And there's a considerable reach advantage, you see there, too, for Buster Douglas. Now let's listen to Jimmy. Fighting out of Columbus, Ohio. Yeah! Yeah! 231 and one half pounds. Yeah! His record, 29 wins, four defeats, one loss, one draw, with 19 wins by way of knockout. He's ranked number three by the WBC, number four contender in the WBA. Please welcome the challenger, James Buster Douglas. They don't know Buster Douglas too well here, but he's one of the real nice guys in boxing with a great opportunity tonight. And his opponent, the defending champion on my left, really needing no introduction the world over. He's ready to fight out of the red corner and attired in black trunks. Hailing from Catskill, New York, he weighed in at a ready 220 and one half pounds. His outstanding record, 37 wins, no defeats, with 33 big wins by way of knockout. He's making his 10th defense of the heavyweight crown, introducing the undefeated, undisputed, Heavyweight champion of the world, the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. Just another day at work for Mike Tyson. He looks almost bored as they call to the center of the ring by the referee, Octavio Meran. remember the dressing from the extraction. Shake hands and good luck, both. Mike didn't have that menacing look that we've seen in so many of his fights before. Anyway, the stage is set. Now, you'll notice something in the crowd here. They don't quite cheer the way they do in the United States and other places around the world. So if you think the crowd isn't into it, we're in the Tokyo Dome. It seats some 60,000 people. There's about 30 to 35,000 here. But it's not that they're not into the fight. It's just that they don't seem to react the same way they do. You know, the baseball players bow at the umpires in baseball when they're called out on strikes. So that kind of gives you an idea. The stage is set. We're set to go. Bob Sheridan here. You see Mike Tyson in the black trunks, traditional, and Buster Douglas. The Buster, it's which Buster Douglas has come to fight tonight. We've seen him fight outstandingly in many of his fights. We're just underway here. Ten point must scoring system. Three judges will score the fight. Larry Rosadio of the United States, Ken Morita of the U.S., and Mr. Uchiha from Japan here. Mike will try to get in and land that big right hand anytime he can. Buster, who's got a pretty good left hand, you see that jab, he's trying to hold Mike off. If he's able to hold Mike off, this thing could go a few rounds. If he can hold Mike off, Mike will dispose of it early. That right hand got thrown. That's a surprise. And one thing noticeable right away here is that Buster is not backing up, and when he gets in tight, he's not just hanging on to Mike. He's here to fight. Johnny Johnson, his trainer, and J.D. McCauley actually believe that Buster Douglas can win this fight, but golly, how many trainers have we listened to over the years that, uh, you know, I think sometimes you get too close to a fighter and you believe things that uh, you're hoping for. But uh, honestly speaking, Buster looks pretty good in the early going here of this, the first round of a scheduled 12-round World Heavyweight Championship fight. And now the uh, warning comes about uh, the heads coming together. You saw Mike's head come right in the cheek there of Buster Douglas. You see the way Mike dips down. And by the way, this is one of the taller fighters as we reach the halfway point and it's the first round. And you see right away Buster not so intimidated by Mike. A couple of unusual things here. You know, against the guys he won the title from, like Trevor Burbick and Bone Crusher Smith, with the exception of Tony Tucker, who Mike won the uh, IBF title from, everybody else has been really intimidated by Mike, and Buster is not showing a lot of that, uh, you know, real intimidation we've seen by other fighters fighting Mike. Hey, hey. Big thing is whether he can sustain this. He, of course, Mike hasn't tagged him yet with a big blow. Look at them as they exchange here in round one. Oh, that right hand actually caught Mike. Uh, Mike may have taken it on the glove there, but uh, Buster is here to fight. 
This is a surprise, I think, right away. You see, again, the key, and keep watching for this, whether Buster can hold him off with the left hand, and what nobody else has been able to do, can he actually ever back Mike off? As that big lunging left hook, Buster able to get notice the right hand up to protect the right ear. I think the height and reach advantage uh, are certainly looking like an advantage for Buster Douglas here in the early going. Buster in at 231 and a half, 11 and a half pounds heavier than is uh, Mike Tyson. Coming up to the closing seconds of this, the first one. Wow! With the right hand is Buster Douglas. And Mike comes right back and answers it with a wild left hand of his own. There's the bell ending round one. I got to tell you, folks, this is exciting now. Great, great. Why you ask yourself a question here as we start round number two? The Tokyo Dome, of course, Mike Tyson and his traditional black trunks, James Buster Douglas in white, already has gone further than some of the opponents of Mike Tyson, uh, namely the last opponent, Carl The Truth Williams, last July, was felled in the first round. Hey, hey, don't do that. Break. Break. And there was a lot of people that didn't expect Buster, quite honestly, to get through the first round, and that's why Don King has brought this show on the road. Look at Buster landing some shots here. And he has him back Mike up. Mike's standing straight in front of him. Look at this, Buster landing some shots. This is surprising here. Getting the jab through, stopping Mike. Mike comes through, leans to the right, and then throws that left hook. You still just get the idea that when is Mike going to explode? You've seen it so many times before. And I, I still have to say to this point, Buster hanging in there pretty good. Now he ties him up, and referee uh, Moran has to separate the two. Mike comes through and misses the jab. You know, a lot of psychology involved with this fight. Before the fight, you heard about uh, Buster Douglas' mom passed away a short time ago, and he's dedicated this fight to his mother, and he had a bit of a cold this week, but that didn't seem to bother him. This is the biggest night of his life. Midway through the second round, a place that many of us thought uh, we might not see. Hey, there's a grazing right hand, it's through the left hand again by Douglas. Surprisingly, here in the second round, this is uh, Douglas's round in the second. The first round uh, probably would be scored more even by the judges because they wouldn't pick up immediately what Buster Douglas was doing. And we, of course, have the advantage of the fellas in the truck that have the punch stat information actually telling us that Mike Tyson uh, only landed a few punches in the first round. But definitely Buster is winning the second round, which is very surprising. Of course, Mike at any time lands that big shot. That's the exciting thing about the heavyweight division because one punch can end it all but certainly change the tide of the fight immediately right now it's a better fight than uh, we have dreamed of here in Tokyo but you still as I said before get the feeling well as Larry Residio says hey watch that head Mike when you uh, when you come in I said Larry Residio he's the judge we're actually talking about Octavio Miran oh an uppercut got through that time by Buster Look at this, Buster landing some shots here. Well, one thing for sure, he's come to fight. Okay, okay. Right, okay. This is as good as we've ever seen Buster Douglas, even in the fight against Tony Tucker, which was a real tough fight. And Buster looked very good in the early going of that IBF championship fight. And then as the bell ends in round number two, uh, Buster kind of uh, went by the wayside. And at his uh, size, Maybe it's a strategy of Aaron Snowell and Mike Tyson to just kind of, you know, make a fight of it through the early going and then catch up with them in the later round with the big shot. If that, that's the strategy, then, then it's working because certainly Buster Douglas is using a lot of energy to this point. See how it goes here, round three. Mike looks like he's got the adrenaline flow going a bit better here. Mike, of course, has had some personal problems, and you wonder uh, everything has come kind of easy for him. Is he bored? Um, you know, he had all the highly publicized problems with his marriage with Robin Givens, and of course, the death of Custom out of good left hook to the body that time. And Don't do that, Mike. Don't do that, Mike. Right, okay. Okay.
They tell me again, uh, interesting information that uh, Buster Douglas has landed over 50 punches and Tyson's landed only 16. Now the problem is the judges don't see those okay, statistics that okay. we're telling you. So uh, I would say that the judges probably scored the first round even in the second round in favor of Buster Douglas. See Mike much more aggressive, but again, Buster's not being backed off by Mike Tyson, which is something we just haven't seen in other fights. No, 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 no. Referee Moran tries to separate the two big fellas. Okay. And the action continues. It's clear that Buster Douglas is not intimidated by Mike Tyson. Mike not using a lot of movement. You notice we haven't seen him do the dip. He's kept that head kind of in the face of Buster Douglas. But we're only in round three, don't forget. And uh, Buster has that history of kind of wearing down as fights progress. Midway point now, and this is the third round. Octavio Moran, the third man in the ring. Name is actually Octavio Moran Sanchez. He goes by the last name Miran. Unbelievable the performance to this point anyway of Buster Douglas. Douglas, of course, in the white. You see him faint right and then he doesn't throw the right hand. Mike tying him up inside. Buster doing something successful when he gets Mike inside. He grabs on and holds. You see right there? And that prevents Mike from doing what we've seen in other fights, dipping down and then coming with that big uppercut. Haven't seen an uppercut yet by Mike Tyson. That one he kind of shoots from the hip and misses the left hand. And notice Buster doing a pretty good job getting his right hand up by the ear so he's not susceptible by getting really creamed by that uh, left hook of Mike Tyson. Oh, that, there's the left hook that got through. That's the first real telling blow by Mike Tyson. And now let's see if Buster can hang on and keep him off. Instead, it's Buster coming back. Mike paws and lunges. You know, Mike has been very successful against uh, some tall guys. Bone Crusher Smith, a big tall guy. Mitch Blood Green, a big tall guy. And both of those uh, opponents just sort of hung on to Mike. With Buster is hanging on when he gets inside, but trying to keep him off of the left and then throwing the right hand. Closing seconds now as the bell ends round number three. Hey, this is round four. Bob Sheridan here. We're in Tokyo, Japan. And a beautiful arena here where they, the Yamuri Giants play baseball most of the time. And the Japanese crowd of some 35,000 on hand here enjoying what they certainly didn't expect. And that's it. We're in the early moments here of the fourth round in Tokyo. Buster has been successful getting his left jab through and holding Mike off. He really hasn't backed Mike off yet. That will be an indication if uh, maybe Buster's for real. And Mike, you saw, landed that big left hook, and there he goes headhunting with the right hand. And that's what Aaron Snowell told him in between the third and fourth round. But again, their philosophy may be to try to wear this big guy down, but at this stage, into the fourth round, Buster not showing any signs of slowing down. It looks a bit lethargic here in the fourth. He's not up on his toes, not shooting out that left as much. Well, there he goes. As I said, he throws the left and the right right behind him. Notice another thing about Buster. It's a pretty good hand speed. And for some reason, Mike doesn't seem to be into it, but he's a guy that, as we've seen so many times in other fights that have gone any distance at all, like against uh, Jose Rebalta that went 10 rounds, and, uh, oh, I suppose uh, you could talk about that seventh round fight uh, uh, with uh, Tyrell Biggs, that Mike, when he decides to pick up the pace, can do it. That's the midway portion of the fourth round. And Octavio Moran separates them for about the 20th time so far here. Of course, the people on hand here are thrilled that Buster is still around here in the fourth round. And the big question is going to be, can he back Mike off? Can he keep that left going? Oh, well, gee, there's a right hand that gets thrown. I'm talking about the big questions, and all of a sudden, the big fella executes it. See him bounce the head back again of Mike Tyson? 
And he's been very successful with the ability to tie Mike's hands up. For some reason, Mike just doesn't look as aggressive and menacing as I've seen him in so many other fights. But all that can change with one big shot. And don't ever forget that. Wow. That's the great thing about the heavyweights. It's always sudden death. There's the ability of Buster Douglas again. You have to say, in all the fights and all the world telecasts we've done that have involved uh, Buster Douglas, this is the best I've ever seen him look. And of course, styles make uh, fights, and you see, oh, there's Mike missing that big left and just raise the chin of Buster Douglas. And Douglas answering the loaded up shots of his own as the bell ends. Round four. Hey, we've got a good fight on our hands here in Tokyo. Wow. Mike Tyson just just barely missed that uh, left hand shot. And right away, Buster came right back. Well, listen. As he manned a holy field, of course, he's in the line. He's got a $12 million guarantee for June. So, of course, he wants everything to go the way it's supposed to go. Evander, one of the great warriors in the sport, but he'll have his hands full with Tyson like everyone else has had. I, I say that uh, like I just expect Tyson to knock Buster Douglas up, but this fight is gonna end first. Here, come on, buddy. Here, come back. Everything will be there. Everything will be there, Come back, okay? The right here. A lot of confidence in the corner of Buster Douglas. Buster filled with confidence as we go to round number five. You know, on my scorecard, I actually have Douglas winning two, three, and four. And look at this, the first two big shots and three and four shots landed, and this is the fifth round, a landed by James Buster Douglas. Not intimidated at all. Now you see what I mean about backing him off? This is the first guy I've seen that's been able to do this. As I say that, Mike comes right forward. The trouble with trying to analyze what Buster is doing now is I just have the feeling that Mike wants to drag this uh, into some later rounds. But there was a real good right hand that landed off the hand of James Buster Douglas. Come on, Mike. No, two punches. Okay. A little bit of swelling and puffiness by that left eye. See the jab followed by the right hand. Mike uh, was puffiness by that left eye here in the fourth round. Now Buster is back up on his toes like he was in the real early going. No, 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 no. You know, as the rounds go by, this guy is gaining more confidence. Okay. So Mike doesn't want to drag this thing any further than he really has to now. Mike never used to be in hit as much as he's been hitting this fight. Oh, big right hand landed that time. Buster is, if, if, if two, three, or four is a question mark, he's winning the fifth round handling. You don't need to be a professional boxing judge at the midway point here, and even inside there, he lands an uppercut. Mike lunging with the left hand, and Buster seems quick enough on his feet, so as Mike lunges with that left hook, he's able to slide back. A lot of that has to do with the height and reach that he has, but he's chosen to stand and fight with Mike, with Bone Crusher, Smith when he fought him, and Mitch Blood Green, Every time they get any place near Mike, they just tied him up and it made for lackluster fight. Buster Douglas, for however long this goes, has come to fight. Buster's making a statement that at least he's not afraid of Mike Tyson. And that's something that we can't say for too many of the opponents that have fought Mike, no matter who they may uh, be, to this stage in uh, Mike's young career. Is Mike having an off night? You don't know, I mean, because again, the guy that lives by the big punishing punches, I've never seen him in any of his fights behind in the fights uh, before, and, and again, I use Bone Crusher Smith, and I use Blood Green, because they're the tallest guys that I can recall him fighting. You see that punishing body shot with the right hand to the side of uh, Buster Douglas's uh, body? Coming up to the closing seconds of the fifth, and this is certainly Buster Douglas' round. All right, and Buster not taking any of the shenanigans from Mike. 
And that tells you something in itself. Back into the corner of Mike Tyson. And we'll listen this time. You got to stay tight on this guy, right? You got to jab. Right hand around here. Left hook up here. Come back into right hand. All right? You can punch him in the same. Mike just not moving laterally at all. He's standing and making himself a nice target for Buster Douglas. This is round six. Scheduled for 12 and a big surprise to this point in the fight here in Tokyo. I've got Buster winning two, three, four, and five. That's unofficial, of course, the judges. Rosadio, Morita, and Uchea of Japan will do the official scoring. But a blind man can see certainly that Douglas is in command at this stage. And at one stage I questioned whether that could be the fight plan to drag it into the later rounds. But Buster not showing any signs of wearing down, at least to this point, we're in the sixth round. Mike Tyson with a long history of early knockdowns all through 1985 and into 1986 when he was fighting a lot. Very few fights get to the second round, almost all first round knockouts. And then uh, you get uh, into the area of 86 where he actually had to go uh, 10 rounds against Quick Tillis was his longest uh, appearance at that stage and hasn't been a lot of rounds since then. No punches, step back. All right. And it's, you know, a real strange thing in my mind. I'm saying to myself, hey, is Mike mentally prepared to go the distance in this fight? And if so, we better start winning some rounds. Sorry? Mike Sorry. looking a bit lethargic to me for the first time that I've seen him in his career. Oh, nice. Nice jab by Tyson that time. See, again, uh, I don't want to give you the false impression that Mike couldn't end this at any time because he still has thunder in both hands. And you get the idea now that the adrenaline's pumping here in the sixth round. Mike has got to realize that he's behind in this fight. You know, he's a guy that things have come very easy for him so far. Now he's got a man who's standing up to him. And this is when they separate the great champions from the guys who are around for a while, is how they face adversity. And Mike has got to rebound from this because certainly Bust is having a good time of it to this point. Whatever the case may be in the eventual outcome, this is turning into a terrific fight. And it's going to be a memorable one. Look at Buster with the movement. Mike continues to stay flat-footed, not showing a lot of boxing skills. We haven't seen any uppercuts from Mike. We haven't seen him dip down. And looking again, almost lethargic, looking to land the big blow, which is thrown about three or four times in this fight. A couple have landed, but Buster's been able to gobble him up. See, that one's just off. We're in the closing seconds now. This is the sixth round. And every time Mike like does that hop, skip, and a jump as the bell ends the sixth round, Buster seems to realize it and backs up. Look at that swelling of the left eye of Mike. That can become a problem. Alright, here we go with the seventh round. Bob right. Sheridan here in Tokyo, Japan. This is for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Mike Tyson in the black trunks having a very tough time of it against James Buster Douglas. You know, coming into the fight, emotionally speaking, Buster probably has everything going for him. A lot of uh, talk about the death of his mother and the dedication, that this is his night and all of that sort of stuff. But of course, one big shot from Mike Tyson can end all that speculation. And Mike looks like he's really trying to land a big shot here in the seventh round. The way the fight's going to this point, you at least have to begin thinking the possibility of an upset because I have Buster considerably out in front of my scorecard. In fact, at this stage in the fight, I don't have Mike Tyson winning one round. I scored the last round even. I was stretching to score it even for that round, and I 
scored the first round even, but I scored two, three, four, and five, all in favor of Buster Douglas. Buster, one of the real nice guys in the boxing game, having the best night of his life. Mike, if he's not having an off night, he's not having a great night. He's not able to execute a lot of things. His hands aren't real busy. He's throwing a lot of wide punches, and every time, just like that time, you see that big shot being landed by James Buster Douglas. Tavio Moran, again, you see the jab, holding Mike off. And more often than not, he's landed. Oh, look at this shot inside by Mike that time. Doesn't seem to hurt Buster. He's in great shape, there's no question about it. Look at him pushing Mike off. Now, this is something you haven't seen. Buster has got the confidence of perhaps, you know, you go back to when Leon Spinks fought Muhammad Ali when you get to this stage in the fight. You had to just say, you know, hey, maybe I can beat this guy, Muhammad Ali, is Spinks thinking. And now you definitely get the idea that Douglas is saying, hey, I can beat Tyson. Uh, he's not so tough. And when a fighter believes in himself and he's ahead on the scorecards, if he doesn't run out of gas, how dangerous can he be? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing, this is the first uh, a second uppercut we see by Mike Tyson inside. Buster trying to get off with a kind of half right-handed uppercut that time. Both guys and Buster showing a little bit more fatigue here. I think Mike probably having his best round of the fight to this point. Nice shot inside. And now you get the idea that at some stage here, Mike can land a big shot and end this fight. There's the bell ending round seven. And that to me is Tyson's first round of the fight. You gotta throw combinations, right? You know, we showed you a shot of uh, Evander Holyfield, but one of the big surprises in this training camp of Mike Tyson was Greg Page, who actually dropped him in training. It was a big surprise. They immediately got Greg Page out of there as a sparring partner because Don King said, hey, Page, if he's able to do that in training, we can make him an opponent. Don't forget, Greg was a former WBA heavyweight champion of the world and could be uh, an opponent for Mike Tyson. Let's see if Mike can sustain what he started in the seventh or Buster is going to get right back on top of his game. We're in Tokyo, Japan. I'm Bob Sheridan. You're watching the heavyweight championship of the world. Mike Tyson throwing a little bit more leather here now in the early going of the eighth round. Buster tying him up. Great, James. Expect him to see some fatigue uh, from Buster. But no matter what the story is, you never expect him to be in the eighth round of this heavyweight championship fight. Buster looking a little bit sloppy now. In the second, third, fourth, and fifth round, Buster able to back Mike off with that jab and then land the right hand behind it. Let's see if he can get back to that. Oh, instead, Mike lands a pretty good right hand of his own inside. And there's going to be a sense of urgency for Mike. I think his corner has told him enough that, uh, you know, you've given away a few rounds. They don't have the advantages that we have with the replays and the punch stats that's relayed to me, but by the same token, they've got two eyes and they can see that to this point in the fight, Buster Douglas is ahead. But in this eighth round, Buster's not the same guy he was in the third, fourth, and fifth, and even into the sixth round. Mike trying to sustain what he did in the seventh there. We find out from the truck again that Mike only averaged about 25, 26 punches through the first uh, six or seven rounds, and he's already throwing more punches than that, I think, in the eighth round. He's busier. And again, for about the sixth time, Octavio Moran warns the two fighters about the heads coming together. Neither fighter has been down, neither fighter visibly shaken. Mike has puffiness by the left eye. Buster, a little abrasion by his left eye. 
Wow, with the left hand is Buster Douglas. Buster drops that big right hand, but Mike takes it on the glove, and he backs off Mike again with the left. Wow, with the right hand is Buster. Buster trying to really work the left eye of Mike Tyson. Did right there, right on top of it, just as I say it. Wow, with the right hand that time is Buster. Buster trying to finish this thing, and you get an idea Mike is trying to finish it as well. This has turned out to be a pretty good fight. And the fact of the matter is it's Buster that's making it the fight. Look at these shots landed by Buster Douglas. And if Buster was out of gas in the early going of this round, he's got it back together in the late portion here. Raising left hand, chopping right, misses. Uppercut landed by Mike Tyson. That's one of the few uppercuts he's landed in the fight. We've been looking for that all night. Oh, that's a nice uppercut that time. The drop Buster Douglas. The counts up to two and three and four. His eyes from where I'm sitting look fairly clear. It's up to seven and eight. And here it is at nine. Is he going to get up? Yes, he does. All right. And the bell ends the eighth round. What a round for Mike Tyson. Wow. What a turn of events. Made a mistake. We're going to show you some replays here. Now let's listen to the corner just a bit. Trying to get his bearings back, trying to get those legs back. As you look at the replay, it'll be an uppercut from Mike Tyson that eventually catches him. And there it is. Look at that. It's a clean right uppercut. And down went Buster Douglas. Different angle. Look at the head snap and the perspiration fly. And that's the Mike Tyson we've been looking for all night. And now the big question is, can Buster get it together between the eighth and ninth round? Look at that, what a vicious uppercut. Is it just another day in the office for Mike Tyson? But his mind is willing, are his legs still there? Mike misses with that vicious left uppercut this time. We're in the ninth round, a place nobody expected us to be in. Look at these shots just loading up by Mike Tyson now. Mike wants to end this. He's had enough of Buster Douglas for one night in Tokyo. Buster seems to have the bounce back in his legs. In fact, he looks better right now in this the ninth round than he did in seven and eight in his history. When he's got fatigue, he's been to buckle, but he's not buckling now. No, no, no. He's doing the right things. He's still sloppy, mind you, in some ways. I you know Buster's mother who died a couple of weeks ago might be watching him and giving him just that extra inspiration that he needs. Whatever it is, he's fighting back like I haven't seen Buster do. Certainly up the ropes, Mike may have gone down as well. I haven't seen Mike in this kind of trouble before. Look at Mike actually grasping to hang on. Mike missing the shots. Buster loading up the shots now. A seesaw battle it turned out to be from 6 7 into the eighth and now the ninth round. Buster down, as you know, in the last round. Come off the canvas. This has been something he's not been able to do. Closing seconds of the ninth round. And this is a big surprise. All right, there's the bell ending the ninth round. The significance of what we just saw is. Buster's history has been when adversity comes, he's had trouble coming back. Mike's history is when he gets a guy in trouble, he's a great finisher. It was late in the eighth round when Buster was in a lot of trouble when he got knocked down. But in the ninth round, Buster actually came back. Look at these and these replays. You see Mike get one big shot in there, but Buster led it to a three. And look at this. Buster catches behind the head, another flush left hook. Trying to get those arms free. Bangs the body back upstairs in the head. Buster doing just about everything right, but Mike landed that big shot in between, but it didn't take a toll on Buster. Buster Douglas absolutely having the night of his life to this point. Oh, Mike tries to land a big right hand to open the 10th round. Mike wants to finish this thing in the worst way. And according to my scorecard, he almost needs to. 
Let's see if Busta can sustain through the 10th rep. Oh, right hand landed as the referee was breaking them. Mike misses the uppercut. Mike's left eye is really closing up now. As they take a look at it, get a good shot. Well, you can't see it, but I can. And his eye is really absolutely closed on the left side. That uh, jab of Buster was good in the early going, but the big surprise to me is the way Buster came back in the ninth round. Look at this, Buster not intimidated, he wants to keep it going. Mike actually, his legs, he's noticed his legs in these wide shots, he doesn't have good bounce in his knees. Buster's legs actually look fresh of the world. It happens here in Tokyo, Japan. A surprise! Mike's definitely confused. Oh, what a surprise, folks. I've called a lot of great fights over the years, but this upset, if you take a look at that left eye of Mike, certainly one of the biggest. Aaron Snowell just there told Mike that he was counted up. Mike uh, kind of obviously unaware of what happened. And look at Buster. John Horn there. Rory Holloway. A lot of concern in that corner. What a scene here in Tokyo. Who would have believed this? Boy, I'll tell you one thing. When the heavyweight championship is on the line, this is why, folks, you can't afford to miss them, no matter who the opponent is. This is unbelievable. Two jabs. Third jab, a glancing blow. As Mike is now about to be counted out. Wow. Boy. You talk about Mike being out of breath and out of gas in some of the big upsets. This is unbelievable. I'm out of breath and out of gas. This is a draining fight to call and to watch. But what a great sporting event to be at. I mean, you're talking about Clay Liston, Spinks and Ali, some of the great upsets of all time. This is going to the record book. Folks, what you've seen is now, I mean, now that I can think about it, is really a very, very historical fight. And one more look at it. There's the big uppercut that changes the course of boxing history, followed by the big left hand right. Bang, right there. Oh, look at this, and Buster's still throwing punches. Another big left hand, throwing the punches as he goes down. And Mike, for all practical purposes, as the mouthpiece flies, is out right here. What a night for Buster Douglas. Now there'll be all kinds of questions about Mike Tyson and his mental preparation for this fight and the change of trainers and the future for Mike. And Wow, what is this going to do to the heavyweight picture? It'll be all a jumble now for this man, the new heavyweight champion of the world. We'll have the official announcement from Jimmy Lennon Jr. and listen to it because this will be a very historical announcement. 23 seconds in round number 10. The winner by way of knockout, the new heavyweight champion of the world, James Buster.